Welcome to the tutorial for setting up a server in XRC Simulator. Today we're going to learn how to create a multiplayer server so we can play XRC Sim matches with our friends. At the beginning, we'll set up a server using the GUI interface inside of the game. This is best for beginners and will be easy to follow. At the end, there's going to be a command line interface option for users that can use the terminal to run multiple servers at the same time, which is best for power users. Let's hop into it. The first thing you'll want to do is go to www.xrcsimulator.org in order to download the latest version of the sim. If you're running your server on a Windows computer, download the version for that operating system. If you're downloading it for Linux and you're not planning on using the graphic user interface, you may want to download this fourth option, which is Linux server for servers without graphics cards. Once the game is installed, you should open the game as if you were going to play it. Select the game that you want to launch the server for using the arrows or the drop down menu at the top, and then select Run Server from the main menu. On the Run Server screen, you'll want to fill in each box with the prompted information. You may leave the Port and Spectators fields empty in order to use their default values. The password and comment boxes are optional, so they do not need to be filled in either. The password field will only need to be filled in if you want to run a private server, in which case only people with the password will be able to join your server. The comment is designed to make it easier to join the server. It makes it more easy for people to identify which server is yours. If you want to make it even easier for people to join your server, you'll want to check the box to register your server. This option is necessary to appear publicly in the server list. It is also necessary to set up port forwarding on your router for the registry option to work properly. More on this later. If you get a Windows Defender firewall prompt, make sure you click allow access to let the server traffic go through your firewall. At this point, your server is running and is joinable from those on the same network as you. Though you will want to set up port forwarding if you want people from around the world to connect to your server. To allow people outside of your home network to connect to your server, first you'll need to find out what type of router you have and how to get access to its settings. You will need access to the router admin login. Search for the default gateway of your router. Most of the time is 192.168.1.1. Find out what the admin username and password is of your router. Sometimes the default password is on a sticker on your router. This process varies depending on your router's manufacturer, so search Verizon Router or Asus Router or whatever brand you have. Once logged into your router's page, find Port Forwarding or Virtual Server somewhere in the settings. Most of the time this is hidden under the Advanced section. Add a port forwarding record that directs traffic on the same port that you used for the server earlier. Note that it defaults to 1446 in XRC Simulator. Have this traffic directed towards your computer's internal IP address. If you don't know your computer's internal IP address, you can find the IPv4 address by typing ipconfig in the Windows command line. Note that if you're using a Unix-based or Unix-like system, such as Linux or macOS, this will be ifconfig in the terminal. At this point, your server should be joinable by anyone, and it will be also listed on the public server list if you chose that option earlier. Congratulations, you're now running an XRC simulator server. At this point, we're going to show how to set up a server using just the command line and terminal, which is especially useful if you're going to be running multiple servers at the same time, or if you want to use some sort of management console. You're going to go to the directory where the game is installed. If you're on Windows, this is usually C, Program Files x86, XRC Simulator. Here you'll see that there is the executable used to play the game, as well as readme.txt, and a couple batch files that are used for starting and stopping the server. First, we're going to open the readme.txt. This includes information about the parameters that are to be fed to the uh, executable when the server is started. For example, there's a parameter to set the port, what game is going to be played, and so on. I recommend that you read through this documentation as it's very useful. 
the start server.bat batch file. You can edit this in any text editor you'd like. You'll want to configure this batch file to match the parameters that are necessary for your particular setup. Make sure the port is set to whatever you have forwarded and the game is set to whatever you want to play. You can also change the comment and the password if you desire. When you're ready to start the server, you can just double click to open the batch file, start server.bat. And when you want to end the server process, you can of course press stop server.bat. By default, these command line servers will run in the background, hence the command prompt window will not be open while they're running. This is configurable in the batch file, you can change this if you'd like. They also save their log output to the file log.txt. You can also customize the name of this. If you are familiar with how to edit PowerShell scripts and batch file scripts, you should have no problem configuring this. You can also use XRC Simulator command line server in combination with tools like Teradactyl to create complex web panels if you're familiar with that as well. If you need any help, whether it's creating a simple server or a more complicated one for a tournament, feel free to reach out to the XRC Sim staff in the official XRC Discord server. The link to that is in the description below. Good luck hosting your server, and have fun playing XRC Sim.